fidelity and scope matter in games because games are inherently designed to be compelling by giving the player agency in where to look and what they can see. Increasing resolution or graphical detail without purpose to lore and world building might be superfluous, but fidelity adds to what the player can choose to see, hear, and experience in the world. It's for that reason that we should appreciate the increase in fidelity in games like Inquisition and Andromeda, and what that means for experiencing the story instead of strictly comparing plot and dialogue of earlier games, which might have been more carefully constructed on the narrow bandwidth of words, but not as richly constructed on the wider bandwidth of visuals and sound. Hello and welcome to the Exalted March where we talk about Dragon Age Mass Effect and Bioware games in general. I want to talk about what fidelity is and why I choose that term instead of simply saying graphics or visuals because I think that there is a distinct difference and I think that fidelity really means something important in particular to role-playing games and I think it makes our experience of, ex of experiencing a story much better. So to start off with, before we go any further, let's talk about what fidelity actually means. I'm using the Merriam-Webster definition, and essentially what it says is that it's accuracy in details. It's exactness. Uh, so an example might be the movie director insisted on total fidelity to the book. But I also like uh, an additional definition to the word fidelity, that it's the degree to which an electronic device, like a record player or a TV or a radio, accurately repro reproduces its effect, such as sound or picture. So in the case of a video game and the game engine or the graphics engine that's being used, I would say fidelity is about showing a world that is true to the vision of the writers and the world builders, the designers, and what they actually wanted to depict, what they wanted you to be able to see and explore. So this isn't simply about saying that good graphics look nice and that they're cool to look at. This is about appreciating the level to which faithfully reproducing a fictional world with a high level of detail adds to the experience of moving through that world, specifically in a medium where player agency is at the core of the experience. Uh, this isn't like... Uh, films or books or other mediums. In games, this really matters significantly because a huge part of your enjoyment is designed around and really hinges on the fact that you as the player have agency. You are in control. And so fidelity means something a little bit different in games than it does in books or movies. In books, you're essentially being told what to see, what your mind's eye should see and hear and imagine. Uh, now, what's great about books is that it is a creative endeavor for the reader also, and it's collaborative. It's one of the reasons why reading books is one of the most encouraged ways to receive stories because it's not quite as passive as watching TVs and movies. When you read a book, you really do need to be an active participant in painting that image in your own mind using the descriptive prose that the author is giving you. So it requires some amount of work on the part of the reader, uh, but it also gives you a pretty significant amount of freedom, relatively speaking, as far as how your mind's eye visualizes that image. Uh, but still, added description, a, a more descriptively written passage, that additional description, that higher fidelity on the page, that is about the control that the author has. So higher fidelity in the written word is really about the author's creativity primarily, although, as I said earlier, the reader does have some creative element in that collaboratively. Now, in films, again, added fidelity or an increase in fidelity is about the filmmaker's creativity. It's really about what the filmmaker wants to show you. You have very little control, but you also, on the flip side, don't have to do much work. So a film is kind of a nice experience in that you're sitting back, the creative heavy lifting has all been done, and you're getting to sit back and enjoy a crafted experience that is being given to you. I'm a big fan of film as a medium, and I like the fact that you are watching a completely 
authored experience. So a really good filmmaker is going to construct each frame, the set design, the lighting, the color palette of the film. They're going to collaborate with the composer to make sure that the musical score matches each moment in each part of that frame. It's really great. It's a phenomenal, that's why people love film so much, but it's a really passive experience. Maybe at most you're digesting plot and characters and having some emotional reaction to it, but for the most part you're watching what is being given to you in a very linear fashion. In games, and in particular I'm going to call out role-playing games, so specifically in role-playing games, Fidelity adds detail to a world where you choose where to go. It's fundamentally different than in other mediums because visuals aren't simply meant to be looked at or imagined. They're there to entice you to explore. And moreover, they're there to make you feel immersed so that when you make decisions in a role-playing game, you feel fully involved with the world you and your character are in. I really think that we should be way more appreciative of graphics for this reason. Uh, And really the right term that I keep using is fidelity. We should be really appreciative of fidelity in role-playing games because it's a part of world-building. And thus, we should use it as a part of our role-playing experience instead of imagining that graphics somehow means that the story isn't as good. Yes, it's true that in some instances... Fancy graphics can be a way to cover up for a story that's maybe not that good. But it's also a way to build a world that feels more detailed and alive. And a world that feels more alive is one that you care about more. And if you care about that world and the characters that are in it more, that story becomes more meaningful to you. So a great example of this in Dragon Age is in Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, we have the village of Redcliffe. Uh, and the village of Redcliffe that we see in Dragon Age Inquisition is very different than the one that we see in Dragon Age Origins. Uh, I talked about this briefly in a video that I did for the In Hushed Whispers commentary. Redcliffe in Inquisition is so much more alive. It's so much more alive and it's more vibrant and it's more detailed. It has a much higher level of fidelity than the Redcliffe that we see in Dragon Age Origins. And don't get me wrong, I love how much you have to do at Redcliffe in Dragon Age Origins. You have a pretty significant impact or you can choose to have a pretty significant impact on Redcliffe in Origins or not depending on how you choose to roleplay your character and depending on where you choose to go. So I think that there's a lot of value in how we get to interact with Redcliffe in Dragon Age Origins, but I never felt as compelled to just look around and to explore Redcliffe in Dragon Age Origins as much as I did in Dragon Age Inquisition. Likewise, another good example in Inquisition is in Crestwood. Uh, In Crestwood, you see the difference that you make after closing the rift that is under the lake in that particular region, and it's massive. It's huge. I mean, you make a really significant difference in the way that that region of the world looks and feels. Crestwood becomes significantly different after you take that action and make that impact. Uh, The weather is different, sure. That's probably what most people would describe as being the, the major difference. But it's not just weather. When that region changes, the entire color palette of what you're seeing is different. Entirely different wildlife actually starts to emerge and only emerges after you close that rift. That's something I actually didn't notice until this most recent playthrough is that animal life actually starts to return to Crestwood after you close the rift. And it might just be me, but I really feel like even some of the plant life is different after you close the rift. Uh, people begin to return to the Crestwood village. Merchants comes back. Merchants come back. Commerce starts to return. Uh, it's a major difference that isn't just spoken of. It's not just described to you in a paragraph of text, or it isn't just represented with minor visual changes, like you know maybe a few additional NPCs walking around the village while, meanwhile, all the art assets and all of the visuals are basically the same. No, it's. It is a major visual graphical overhaul to that area 
that I actually wish we would have seen more of in Mass Effect Andromeda, where some of the changes that we see in that game are actually more on the minor side, uh, considering the difference you make to some of the planets that you visit in that game. Now, don't get me wrong, I like a lot of the higher fidelity in Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, and I'll probably end up making a separate video just to talk about that game and what higher fidelity means to Mass Effect. Uh, I'm just saying that Inquisition does it really, really well, and we should appreciate that. My most recent playthrough of Inquisition has really brought me back around to this game. I mean, I loved it initially. Uh, when I finished Dragon Age Inquisition for the first time, I don't remember exactly what I tweeted out, but I remember tweeting out really significant praise of the game. It made a huge impact on me, and when I was done playing it, I was fairly confident that it was my favorite game within the Dragon Age franchise, and really one of my most favorite games in the entire Bioware catalog. Now, having replayed the entire trilogy again, I can't state enough how much I love Dragon Age Origins. I mean, I really, really forgot how much I loved Dragon Age Origins. And even though it doesn't have some of the higher fidelity things that Inquisition has, I think it makes up with it uh, with a lot of detail in other places like the freedom and the, the sort of bandwidth that you have in, in role-playing. But I loved, I loved Dragon Age Inquisition. But with Dragon Age Inquisition, I'm really kind of re-realizing how much I enjoyed it. Uh, again, I loved it on the initial playthrough, but then I began to notice that it didn't do as well for me on replays. When I went back for my second and third replays, at least initially, I enjoyed it, but it didn't seem as impactful to me as maybe some of the earlier Bioware games did on replays. But now, after having been away from the Dragon Age franchise for a while and having replayed the whole trilogy, Inquisition really stands out to me. It's not about saying that it's better or worse than Origins, it's just a matter of appreciating the strengths that each game has. Fidelity in games matters. It matters because it adds to the richness of our experience. So I hope that this is something that you'll consider, especially when playing Inquisition or Andromeda. And if you're like me and you have found yourself really liking the newer games and feeling attached to the worlds in a way that you weren't with some of the older games, consider that that may not be a bad thing. Just consider that that may be a matter of fidelity that is causing you to feel that way. Uh, I personally find the writing to be stronger at times and then weaker at times in the newer Bioware games. But what's not arguable to me is that fidelity is definitely higher, and that matters. It's a good thing. It means that technology is definitely improving, and that that technological improvement is definitely making the games more enjoyable. So that's uh, those are my uh, thoughts on the matter. Again, I hope that this will be something that you think of the next time you're playing Dragon Age Inquisition, the next time that you are playing... Mass Effect Andromeda, hit the comment box down below. Let me know what you think of the balance between story and graphics and whether or not you prefer some of the older games or whether or not you really appreciate the detail with which uh, these newer games are being rendered. Once again, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Masadonis, and until next time.